I have been rebuilding cars on my YouTube channel for a couple of years now. And the most important thing about my channel, that's my Lamborghini, is that I do all the work myself. Now the only way I can afford cars like this is if I do the work because I can't afford to have somebody else do the work. And I also like doing the work. In general, fixing cars is pretty easy, except for when it comes time to paint. Painting's hard. It's a unique skill and it takes a whole closet full of equipment. I've painted every one of these projects myself and I'm gonna share with you everything that you shouldn't do if you wanna be a DIY painter. I wish I could keep all the cars, but the reality is I can't. I do like to keep tokens of appreciation from each project. This is a grill from the Bentley. I'm probably gonna hang it on the wall. Another thing I seem to keep from each of my projects is the leftover paint. Paint is really expensive. It's kind of hard to throw away. If I ever scratched a bumper that I just painted, I'd feel really silly for having thrown the paint away. The problem with hoarding paint is now the closet is full of Audi R8 paint, Lamborghini Gallardo paint, Porsche 911 paint times two, and Bentley paint. It's a lot of paint and I don't need it. Remember the guy who welded my R8 frame back together? That's my friend Vinny. Vinny wants me to paint his truck. Let's use Vinny's truck to do all the things you're not supposed to do when painting a car. Tip number one, never mix paint. Leave that to the professionals because if you needed to recreate the color a second time, maybe a few months from now, it's just not gonna happen. I don't plan on painting Vinny's truck more than once, so we're gonna mix the paint. Vinny thinks we're mixing it to make a really cool custom color for him, but we're really just mixing it because I don't have enough of one single color. Tip number two, don't use a drill battery as a hammer. So after we change into our painting costume and load up our Lamborghini full of painting equipment, let's go paint a truck the wrong way. Tip number three, don't paint on top of a miserable coat of spray paint, unless it's your buddy's truck. <laughs> That's my buddy Vinny, he's a good dude. <laughs> Tip number four, don't ask the owner if they like the color until after you spray. Yeah, it looks like drywall. Oh, cool. I like the gnats in it. <laughs> <laughs> I brought filters. I think tip number five. Don't use household masking tape. It's not sticky enough and the overspray will find its way through the cracks. Unless it's your buddy's truck. Tip number six. Do not use household garbage bags as a drop cloth or as a car tarp for paint. The chemicals from the paint can actually melt the plastic. I learned this the hard way. So be careful with what you use as a paint tarp, unless it's your buddy's truck. Tip number seven. Do not paint outside under a tree in the fall season. Also don't spray near a Lamborghini. Yeah, right here. Tip number eight. Do not paint one half of the car. Paint the whole thing at once. I don't have enough clear coat with me today, so we have to paint the first half of the car now, and then I'll come back later and do the rest. If you paint them separate, the paint may not match perfectly. Although it doesn't matter if it's your buddy's truck. Tip number nine. If you can, try not to paint alone. It's a lot more fun with your pal. Remember what I said about painting under a tree? That's what I'm talking about. Tip number 10. Don't spray color over bare metal. You have to put primer down first or else the paint might not stick. I mean, we're not gonna do that because it's our buddy's truck. I feel like we don't even know if we can do this. Yeah, can actually, you just mix paint? I have no idea. It's very light gray. And I feel yeah, that's like a really good point about mixing them. I think they're all the same type of paint. There's your paint, dude. That's the color? Well. Yeah, yeah. I think it's gonna look cool on the car. Yeah, I don't know why it looks like there's some sort of contaminant in there. Tip number 11. Do not hook your paint gun up to an air compressor without a water separator and an air regulator. Otherwise your paint job can get contaminated by the water and the air pressure coming directly out of the air compressor is way too high for the paint gun. But we're gonna do it anyway. Tip number 12. If you have a chance, be sure to let your inexperienced friend lay down one coat of color. This way, if something bad happens in our end result, we can always blame this part of the paint job. Although, like most things that require some level of craftsmanship, 
Vinny picked this up pretty quick. Don't use a battery as a hammer. Did I already say that? Tip number 13. If you're painting outside, do not wait too long to spray your clear coat because it gives more time for the bugs and dust to land on top of your color coat. Tip number 14. Do not walk in front of the camera, please, Vinny. Tip number 15. Do not wear minimal protective equipment while spraying clear coat, Vinny. Tip number 16. Do not spray directly over the mosquitoes that land in your clear coat. Try and pull them out. Did you get it? This car has been sitting now overnight and I have more clear coat to finish the job. Tip number 17. Remove all the rubber and plastic molding. Don't just tape things off. Oh no, did I do that? Sorry if you wanted that painted, Vin. This is even more true for the mirrors. You have to remove these, at minimum tape them off. We're not gonna do either. Let's see if the paint sticks. In trying to follow my own rules, we're gonna see if we can get this car out from underneath the tree. Tip number 18. Drain the water out of your compressor long before you start painting. Don't wait until you're halfway finished painting the truck before you drain your tank. Vinny had to run off to work, so I'm gonna mix the paint in the garage now that he's gone and can't be here to tell me that I'm not allowed to do this. Tip number 19. For the hard to reach places, make sure you have yourself a bench or a ladder to stand on. Some way for you to get a good angle of attack at all the hard to reach surfaces and don't just stand awkwardly on the frame of the truck. While we let all this paint dry before we clear coat, I have a ton of paint left over in the gun. So I was thinking it would be really interesting to find something inside Vinny's garage that we could paint for him. Something that he won't notice right away. I just thought of something. What's the one thing we're constantly losing in our toolbox or in our workshop? 10 mil socket. I stuffed it on the end of a short length of 12-2 wire that I also found in Vinny's garage. Four coats of white, and I'll stick it in the lawn to dry. The last step is clear coat, and by now, your family's getting pretty upset that this project's taking so long. So my only tip when spraying clear coat is to hurry up. Vinny, have fun with the rest of your truck build, buddy. I had a great time painting it, and it probably turned out pretty good. We're not there yet, so we don't know. Tip number 20. I always advocate go super heavy on the clear. I'd rather sand out runs in the clear coat than accidentally sand through a thin spot in the clear coat and have to start all over. Don't forget to clear coat the 10 millimeter socket and stick it back in the mud right where Vinny's trying to grow some grass. Kind of ironic, I made a video with tips about how to get a good paint job. And this was a questionable quality paint job. A few areas, if you look close, do have some runs. Right there. But you'd rather have runs in the clear coat than not have sprayed enough clear coat because if you don't spray enough clear coat, there's no correcting it. All the runs in the paint can be polished and buffed. I'm not gonna do that. But somebody should. Enjoy your new truck, Vin. Tip number 21. Don't wait too long to pull the tape off or else the clear coat edge will look pretty haggard. At first glance, it looks really good. This has to be the first car with Lamborghini paint mixed with Audi R8 paint mixed with Porsche 911 paint. If you wanna see Vinny build the rest of the bed, check out Keystone Metal Co. on Instagram. Hey, check out the 10 millimeter. I even managed to get a run in the clear coat. It's not totally dry, but I think I can put it back in his toolbox and he won't know. Imagine for a few days. I think it went here. Does it stand out? Really impressed with what you've done with all your tools, Vin. Nice and organized. But I have to say, I love what you've done with the 10 mil. Overall, a lot better than the red. It still needs a little work to make the clear coat shine, but at least now you know exactly how not to do it.